Hello again, everybody. It is Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling, Nike Hot Seat, very special guest in the hot seat today. He joins us now, does Greasy. That's what I'm talking about, James Green. James, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, always a pleasure to be on the show. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you were prepping to go to Istanbul the 1st through the 8th of uh, February, that trip literally around the corner. Will you fly out of Omaha? Um, I think our flight is scheduled to leave from Lincoln because um, we're going to take the, the main trip from Chicago, okay. Chicago to Frankfurt, and then Frankfurt to Istanbul. And the competition over there, obviously, they are waiting to see you guys. And Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's um, been a while for you since competition. Yeah, I haven't competed since World Championships. So, um, yeah, it's been, you know, this first year for me not being uh, competing back-to-back uh, -back weekends like the college season. So it's definitely been a while, and I'm definitely itching for a scrap. So I'm ready to get out there and compete with some guys. Tight Mercury Press Wrestling Club. Yeah, wait. Tight Mercury Wrestling Club, Nebraska Regional Training Center, done a good job. So proud of you, a world bronze medalist. And, man, I tell you what, you made it look good. Um, Yeah, uh, obviously it would have been better if it was gold, but uh, it was definitely a learning stone, and I had fun doing it, especially ending the tournament with a pin. Um, got the crowd going and the atmosphere, especially wrestling my first world championships at home. It was just great. There was a lot of fans there. A lot of my family was there to support me, and, um, yeah, I just loved wrestling in front of the crowd. Big crowds like that, that's what, you know, we live to wrestle for. It's now, always nice. Of course, you won bronze at 70 kilos. You're going to be in competition at 65 kilos, and right now the uh, the polls are out, and I believe our Adidas – uh, polls are out uh, for takedown, and takedown uh, polls have you at uh, number one at 65 kilos above Brent Metcalf. Did you know that? Yeah, um, no, I did not know that, but um, you know, rankings is just rankings, and it's any given any given Sunday, but um, I'll definitely be looking to go into the tournament like I'm the guy to beat, so that's for sure, and um, right now we're focusing on Istanbul and the upcoming tournaments uh, leading to trials. What's been your experience with Brent Metcalf uh, prior to, uh, you know, any competition you might be facing here in the future? Um, you know, he lives up to his, uh, his name, you know, Brent Metcalf. He's going to grind. He's going to wrestle you from beginning to end. Um, we wrestled a couple of times at the OTC at some training camps, and, um, yeah, there are always some great matches back and forth and um yeah like a lot of scoring um but that's granted that i'm up at a weight class that i wrestled at 70 kilos so it'll be different to be in his territory and those other guys that are wrestling the field down at their weight and wrestling them um at 65 kilos what's your game plan should you face him is it just try to get him to wrestle your style or what uh, i'm gonna do what i always do you know i'm taking a lot of shots i'm looking to score and um, this past, over this break since the World Championships, we've been working a lot on parterre um, offense. So I'm going to look to try and get points on top, um, not only on my feet, but on top as well. I've heard you called the shot master. Have you heard people reference you as the shot master? No, I have not. <laughs> That's a new one. What does that mean to you if, if, if you heard that? Because I've heard it. And um, what does that mean to you if people call you the shot master? Um... I would guess, you know, I would say they might be talking about my counter offense, maybe just because, you know, if a guy shoots and they don't get a good enough shot that I'm going to, it's likely that I'm going to counter you and get back in on your legs. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of what I take from what I hear from that. But, um, yeah, it's the first time I heard it, and that, that's pretty fun. I kind of like it, dude. On the T-shirt, <laughs> shot master in the house. Uh, but you're also very... And they, they they say greasy, greasy. Um, your team teammates and buddies yeah. uh, call you that affectionately, and that is, of course, I think, uh, more indicative of the style. And you're you're just slippery. You're hard to get hold of. You're hard to you're hard to attack and maintain an attack. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, we've been working on that a lot, and especially these you know foreigners, they like to stay out in front, and try and get a hold of you. So I think it'll definitely help being able to move my feet faking them out the shoes and being able to get to the legs. What shoes are you wearing? Right now, I'm actually wearing uh, 
I just got these these A6 Gel fives. Cool. Those are They're cool. Tie dye blue. Um, yeah, I just actually got them last weekend. Trying them out, and they're they're great, comfortable. The folks at A6, good people. Oh yeah. We're Real talking good. with James Green, and uh, he's got a brand new Skype account. And I tell you what, it's working <laughs> like a dream. He figured it out like like that. Other people, you got to walk through it, Wayne. Oh right? man, no, no. <laughs> Actually, um, I I forgot I had it on my phone. I just don't have it on my laptop. This is how I communicate. Like when I go overseas, you know, um, they try and charge you extra for talking on the phone. So I just use Skype. <laughs> it's a magic so thing, it. man. Skype is an outstanding thing. Yeah, especially. Let's talk about your weight class. 65 kilos loaded with great, I mean, it's a who's who, really, from uh, Jason Chamberlain's and Humphreys, Molinero's, Picos, Kennedy, Stevers, Greens, uh, Oliver's, Metcalf's. I mean, this is a who's who. Uh, f go back to collegiate weights from like 140 all the way up to 165. So take a look at that. Break it down. Anybody there you're just really looking forward to facing? Um. If I could, I would, I would like to wrestle all the guys, you know. If I could have a spot where I, it just let me wrestle everyone, that would be great. Um, but, yeah, it's a definitely a tough field. Um, I like to wrestle Metcalf um, in competition, J.O., um, Steber, Kennedy, a lot of the guys that have been at top, you know, um, just kind of so they, you know, leave no doubt with um, a lot of the people in USA Wrestling to know that they're getting the best guy at the weight class and um to be the best guy you got to beat the best and right now they've steber metcalf um and uh jo have been usually the top guys um at the weight so i would definitely like to wrestle all three of them and um compete for the spot well you're the top dog on the takedown uh uh roster as far as uh, rankings go so to be the man according to rick flair <laughs> you got to beat the man they got to come in and wrestle you too. Yeah, um, you know, I'm I'm sure like other wrestlers they're they're out um, you know, watch video scout and um that they're, you know, taking a match at a time and if they do happen to wrestle me, I'm sure they'll be ready and um I'm I'll be ready for them too and I'm looking excited to compete especially against these guys at a new weight class and their weight class um that i'll be entering into yeah well <laughs> number one it seems like it might be your weight class too <laughs> um we're talking with james green they call him greasy and and he's uh itching for a scrap he said earlier he hasn't been in competition since he won the world bronze in las vegas nevada at 70 kilos i gotta ask you about one of your training partners um some people call him champ uh He's an amazing man. He truly is. Uh, turns out he's a pretty darn good father, good husband, uh, excellent coach. But to your, to you, he's become a mentor. Talk to me about Jordan Burroughs and your special relationship. Um. Yeah. It's you know we've been we were talking about this the other day. Uh, this is his, like his tenth year out here, and this is my fifth year. And what happened was his senior year was my senior year in high school, and he had been my host for my recruiting trip. And, um, you know, before I even came to visit, you know, um, Nebraska was one of the top schools that were talking to me. And I just knew I was coming here. But from that day to right now, you know, Jordan, we've been working out. We've worked out. I don't, I can't even count how many times. But he's always, you know, giving me little tips here and there. And um, uh, Manning and Snyder, they're always right there, too. Um, um, they've developed me and helped me develop into a, a better wrestler. Every year I've been, you know, just making gains, um, whether it's moving my feet or getting another takedown or being a wrestle a whole match. Um, <clears throat> they've just been there. And this year going into Worlds was especially, I mean, I think it was the best thing that could have happened. Me and Jordan made the team same year. We were uh, not only training at Nebraska at the same time, but when we went to the Olympic Training Center, we were roommates. When we went to uh, the World Championships, we were roommates. And then we wrestled the same day. So our routine for preparing for the World Championship was very similar. And I think that's what, if you go to any um, regional training center, that's what guys are looking for, just someone they can have that can push them to that next level, that can keep them in good shape, that can you know, um, make them the best they can be. And I think that's the kind of relationship me and Jordan have. And, um, 
you know, this year looking to make the world or Olympic team, I'll be right there behind him again. And um, hopefully we'll be bringing back both goals. But um, Jordan has definitely been a great mentor, um, whether it's wrestling and lifestyle in and out the room. Um, he's just been great been real help. Amazing, isn't he? I mean, truly, if if you're looking for a gold medalist and we're going to design one, let's say you, you're going to go in the shop and you're going to put yourself together a gold medalist, the dream guy for uh, for Team USA, the guy that can actually take the sport on his shoulders and walk with it comfortably. It's not a struggle for this man. He does it with such style and grace. It's For us, it's truly amazing. Yeah, it's, it's definitely great. Um, and I see it every day. I see, get to see the hard work and how he prepares for big tournaments and um, competition. Is so, he a, is he a jokester he, or a playful guy? Oh yeah, he's it's. I don't think he ever comes in the room, you know, um, sad or you know upset. He's always in a good mood. Always looking forward to getting better. Always looking forward to working hard. He's always trying to win every race. He's you know, always trying to do, just up you know, he's trying to outdo everyone in the room. He's trying to be seen. Trying to be noticed. So. He's definitely a jokester, and he's he's just a good guy all around. When was the last time you practiced and or worked out with Mark Manning? Um, well, he ran. I mean, he runs practice now. We don't really work out as much, but you know, if there has to be like some part tear, Manning, he's really good on top. He's got a good gut and a good leg lace. He could still do that stuff. So, it's uh great to roll around with Manning. Um, he's got so much knowledge. He's, he said, he said, if it came down to it, and he really put his shoes on tight, okay, <laughs> it, it, he'd, he'd bring it for you. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I know if uh, Snyder was to train, get back on the mat, and he'd be uh, he'd be right there with a lot of guys in the in the U.S. and maybe the world right now. Snyder's dangerous, isn't he? Oh, Snyder's real dangerous. He still got it. You know, you say knowledge, but he also has incredible mat awareness. Oh, the yeah. ability to teach. And, uh, and, I mean, you learn when he demonstrates. He is a doctor. He did get his doctor degree. <laughs> Do you call him doctor? Dr. Snyder? No. Oh, no. You're Not in the rest there? of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I actually kind of like that. I'm going to give him the nickname Dr. Snyder. Dr. Well, Snyder. I'm going to give you an opportunity because obviously there are people from from Wellingboro, New Jersey, all the way to Lincoln, Nebraska, to Las Vegas, to San Marino, California, the home of the Mighty Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, and the Nebraska RTC as well. Um, give you an opportunity to say thanks or shout out to whoever you want to give it to. Who would that be? Um, definitely thanks to Titan Mercury uh, Wrestling Club, um, providing travel um, and stay at, at you know, tournaments around the U.S. or even um, helping getting you to travel to overseas. And uh, they provide a lot of gear. Um, uh, NWTC and Nebraska Wrestling definitely helped me a long way. That's where I live. I'm, I'm still in school, looking to graduate this semester, have 13 credits left. And um, definitely want to say thank you to you guys for having me on the show. Um, a lot of guys, you know, Want, like to be up kept update with uh, the wrestlers and you know what's going on in their lives and how they're going about their training and this is the kind of things that help keep the wrestling community aware and up to date and um, as one so I appreciate that and um, it's always great. In closing, Sunday the twenty fourth, they dropped a banner for you two men and uh, talk about recognition. I mean, let's face it, not on on every campus, wrestling is not king. But you guys have absolutely uh, made wrestling very, very important on the campus of the Cornhuskers of Nebraska, and they honored you with that banner, and it will forever be in those rafters. What does that mean to you? Um, it's definitely great. Um, since I've come came here, the wrestling fan uh, has grown. Uh, fans have grown, and we're getting more and more each year. And like you said, wrestling isn't um, top sport. I had a lot of schools, and I think we're on our way to building. I mean, we've got a lot of hard to compete with the Husker football, but, um, you know, we're we're climbing up and we're getting a lot of support, and it's awesome, especially knowing that little kids coming from the Lincoln area or Omaha or wherever they're coming from get to look up and see that, hey, Nebraska has created um, some world champions uh, or an uh, Olympic champions and some world medalists. And, you know, if they come to NWTC or whether they stick with their wrestling programs um you know they come to nebraska those things can happen to them too so it's amazing 
65 kilos, they got to bring it, man. Sitting in the catbird seat, number one in the takedown pole is James Green at 65 kilos. Remember, you got that uh, 70 kilo world bronze medalist. And of course, now they're honoring him with banners. Next up, trophies and uh, those great big statues that'll be outside the arena as well. I don't know if you've heard about it, but they're 12 feet tall, made of uh, brass, are just gorgeous. Uh, I think you're holding up your hand in victory or you're looking for a stall call. I'm not sure. Doing the Dan Gable. <laughs> Doing the Dan Gable. James, always good to talk to you, man. We'll look forward to seeing the results from Istanbul. Best to you, your team, and of course, uh, the mighty one, Jordan Burroughs as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown. My very special guest has been James Greasy Green. He's the man, the myth, and the legend in the making. Uh-